Welcome to the Continue Creating Show, the number one show to inspire you to continue to be creative and follow your passion. My name is Matthew Stratton, and if you're new here, welcome. Today we have a special guest, music producer, My Dead Friends. What's going on? Welcome to the show today. On today's show, I have a special guest, My Dead Friends. What's going on? How are you doing today? What's up, Mr. Stratton? I appreciate you having me here today, man. It's a pleasure. Always a pleasure hanging out and talking with you, man. Right on. And uh, My Dead Friends is a music producer, as in he produces instrumental music and he also produces music for people to sing and rap over and he also has his own youtube channel before we get actually get into this i just want to talk about your name for a second where did you get that name my dead friend (laughs) it's interesting man because i i get that a lot and it's i I, uh expected to get that a lot you know what i mean because i know the name my dead friends people see it and immediately they think oh it's morbid or something like that for me the start of My Dead Friends really came about was in the past, things kind of got skewed for me, right? I kind of went right when everyone went left. But the thing was, is everyone just let me go right and deserted me in my mind. You know what I mean? If you talk to them, they might see it a different way. You know what I mean? So a lot of my friends, I felt abandoned me. In my worst, most vulnerable time, they left. So the name My Dead Friends is literally me killing them off in my mind and no longer having to think of the things that they either didn't do or did do to me. So the name My Dead Friends is really a reminder not only of the people who uh, hurt me in the past, but also the people that I've lost. I've lost a lot of friends, the drug overdoses and car accidents and stuff. And it really piled up maybe like uh, around eight years ago. Things seemed to escalate very quickly. and To me, it's just a way for me to honor my dead friends, my actual dead friends, and for me to also personally remove the evil friends I have and just consider them my dead friends as well. So that's kind of where it came from in my mind. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a dual meaning there. Exactly, man. (laughs) Double-edged on that. You know what I mean? It It can mean both. It does mean both things, and it means certain things more so at certain times for me than it does at other times, you know. But yeah, it was something that ran through my head, actually. I had the name for probably two or three years before I actually went with the name My Dead Friends, because I used to produce under the name The Deity. I don't know if you've ever watched any of my YouTube channel. uh, You always hear me introduce myself as the deity of my Mm -hmm. dead friend. So that's kind of how the name, the deity though, I actually got from an old friend of mine back when I was around 16 and I first started like really rapping. Like I was really into rap at first and writing verses and stuff before I started producing. So that's kind of really what got me into hip hop, got the name, the deity, things evolved and eventually became my dead friends. Uh, right on, right on. Yeah, man. Cool. Cool. So, um, so now if we want to look you up, is my dead friends. It's like, we're not going to be searching friends. for With a Z, by the way. I made this terrible decision <laughs> early on to put a Z at the end. But, you know, that's just okay. what it is now. It's my dead friends with a Z. That's just what it is, man. Okay, it okay. Looks cool. <laughs> so, so it sounds like you've been doing this for a little while. How long have you been producing music? Absolutely, man. Uh, it's Music has always been an incredible incredibly deep part of my life. Uh, my dad was a drummer back in the day, probably till his around 17 or something like that. So when I was around 14, I think, 13, 14, uh, rooting around through our house, I found his old drum kit, right? And that's really what kind of kicked off music as a creation tool for me. And not only just like uh, something to listen to, but as something to create and to make music, man. So around 13, 14, my cousin got a guitar. I started getting heavy on the drums, playing that a lot, a lot, a lot of drum drumming. You know what I mean? So that's really where like uh, my roots lie is as a drummer. But started learning piano a little bit. Then I picked up guitar because everybody knows that the drummer doesn't get any girls. So I wanted to play guitar to be cool, but I'm terrible at coordination on the guitar. <laughs> I'm the, if you ever see me play guitar, I, I'll be the first to admit I'm not a great guitar player, but I love it, right? So really around 14, 15, I started playing drums. 18, uh, probably closer to 20 maybe was when things really got leveled up and I got the Korg Triton, 
which you can see behind me here, the silver keyboard, uh, major investment, man. It was a major investment at the time. Twenty. That's years the old, silver five. one. The silver one underneath yeah, there, right? Silver right. keyboard under here. Uh, I bought that, and then hip hop really took off for me because I was already rapping then, and I wanted my own beats. So I bought the Triton to make my own beats, and then after that, man, things just kind of just ran. I ran with it, man, because I I loved making beats. I loved having the Triton because I was able to put strings, pianos, okay, that drum yeah, yeah. on it. I could create everything I wanted from that keyboard, man. And it, it really just set me to another level. Really. So, so the Triton has drums on it. It has strings on it. It has a bunch of different instruments. And can you, you can actually program songs with the Triton. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I could, uh, I could even record my vocals and stuff on there if I wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, the, the Triton's a, a beast of a machine. It was around a... 2004 purchase 2000 i think it was actually late 2004 with december when i uh bought the triton yeah and i've like i said i've had it ever since so it's been 16 years then i've had it yeah so it's music's been something that's it's always stuck with me you know what i mean like people try different things out you know i was a skater for a while and i did that for probably about five years but it also left me you know what i mean but music has been something that's been constant in my life like i said for around probably 12, 13 years old, man. When that drum kit came around, it just kind of grabbed me and I, okay, don't, I ain't okay. letting it go. <laughs> so so your first instruments was the drums. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's kind of like, drums, to me, it's kind of like a multi-instrument. I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on with the drums. So you got to have a lot of coordination to be able to play the drums, right? You know what? Like, I'm, I'm a, a backbeat drummer. You know what I mean? Okay. I'm, not Keith, I'm not Keith Moon. Okay. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I could well out. Uh, I was in a couple metal bands even, you know what I mean? And like I could play some Slayer. Like I used to be able to double kick pretty good. Like mm -hmm. I probably can't do it now. I guarantee I don't even have the stamina to hold up doing that playing a five minute Slayer song on drums. But yeah, man, we, I, used to, I used to be able to well out pretty good. I actually have probably, I think it's like a seven piece fusion drum kit I have upstairs. I have a whole cymbal. I got, it'll probably, the drum kit I have would probably fill this room almost. That's why it's not down here. I'd like to start implementing that more into like my hip hop beats, live drum kits, get them mic'd up. Yeah, that'd it's be just cool. finding the space for everything. You know what I mean? You know how yeah, space yeah. Goes. That's the thing about drum kits; they're always they they take up so much space. And then if you want to do a gig, it's just a lot of stuff to take yeah, with you. I have the whole drum kit right in this little MPC yeah. machine. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so <laughs> yeah. it's, it looks like you've added some stuff to your arsenal there. So you got an MPC yeah. live in front of you. I've, Definitely evolved, man, just from uh, my 13, 14 year old drum kit self, man. Uh, like I said, after uh, around 20 years old, after the Triton, that stuck with me till about 30 years old. And then when I was around 30, I started picking up some other things, my mixers and stuff like that, guitars I really got into and stuff like that. But the MPC, I'm trying to think, even, I think it was around 2012. Or it had to be around 2012, I think, when I bought my MPC 5000. Like, that's what really got me into the MPC family. When I bought okay, that 5000 okay. and brought it home uh, as a standalone machine, I wanted to start sampling. Like, that was something when I initially first thought to myself that I wanted to start sampling. I always learned as a hip hop head, loving hip hop, you buy an MPC if you want to sample and make hip hop beats. Like, that's the piece of gear you want if you want to be a sample based hip-hop producer so i went with the 5000 love my mpc 5000 it stuck with me for a while but as soon as akai announced the mpc live i was immediately i had it pre-ordered i was i was in take my money i want that mpc live man and it's been fantastic it, it's it's an incredible machine really. so did you uh you pre-ordered the mpc live or you just got yeah. it like right when it came out i actually i pre-ordered the mpc x first and then I had the MPCX pre-ordered for, I think, almost like a couple of weeks. And then I remember they're saying that the MPC lot, there was something with production or something that it was going to be a little later just to get the pre-orders on the MPCXs. And then the MPC lives were actually going to be released first. So, okay. You wanted me, to get it sooner. someone that's impatient. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I got a little impatient. That's okay. You know, so I was like, I'm canceling that pre-order on the X and I'm getting an MPC live, which... In hindsight, I think was one of the greatest decisions I've ever made because having a standalone MPC Live that it is with the battery, internal battery, 
uh, the first year of me even having the MPC Live, I made a lot of my beats just kind of sitting on my bed with the headphones on, watching TV, trying things out with it. I got to really dive into the MPC Live and just play with it instead of like trying to make something right away. You know what I mean? Just sitting on your bed, playing around and not being in a studio setting. It just gives you like this different vibe that you don't have to, don't have to do something right then and now. You know what I mean? You can kind of play around with things. So it was really cool having a standalone MPC with an internal battery that I could just make beats wherever I wanted to. Yeah, that's what's cool about the uh, the live in particular. It does have that battery. So right. yeah, <laughs> you don't have to Definitely, be. I, trust me, I have been looking at the MPCX recently to see if it's been coming down in price. And I'm afraid that they're going to discontinue it at some point. And I want <sighs> Yeah. I want an MPCX, but I'm not even sure an MPCX would fit here. I have to measure it out actually to see if I could even fit. Right. Yeah. Cause they are definitely um, massive compared to the right, live. Right. Um, but hey, so what, what is your favorite instrument out of all the instruments that you played? What was your favorite one? The bass. I love bass. low end bass. I love low end bass. And I love how the bass, like, just like you can get that funk and that slap. Uh, Les Claypool. I love Les Claypool. Uh, originally, why I bought a bass was because of Jason Newstead of Metallica mm-hmm. or uh, Cliff Burton of Metallica playing Pulling Teeth, Anesthesia. Like hearing mm-hmm. that bass solo as a kid, I wanted to. I want to play that. So literally, when I bought my bass, which I still have, it's behind me. That court bass. I don't know if you can see it in the shot. I've had yeah. that bass yeah. since I was fourteen. I bought a wah pedal. The same day I bought that bass because I wanted to play Pulling Teeth by Metallica. Like I, I wanted it so bad. I wanted to be Cliff Burton. I wanted to be Jason Newstead at that time, man. My hair was long. I would play bass, whipping my hair around like a metal head. <laughs> loved it, man. I loved every bit of it, man. Nice, yeah, I nice. just have a real appreciation of music. You know what I mean? Like I'm not just a hip-hop head. I love music, you know? I, I could definitely relate to that, man. I love all yeah. kind of music myself. Now, um, so I just want to talk about your process because you do, I do want to mention that you do have a multiple song, a multiple song release coming out, I believe now, like probably if you're watching this, it's out. So I will leave a link in the description if you are watching this, uh, you know, on YouTube or if you're watching it like in a podcast, I want to try to do this on podcast. I'll see if I can leave a link to that release, but I just want to kind of talk about your process a little bit because it's a little bit different if you're playing bass right? You're doing it on your own. Um, You don't have everything else going on with you. So what's your process now? Because I've heard, you know, your other releases and there's a lot more going on the bass. So can you talk about that a little bit? (laughs) My process can be very strange, man. Uh, uh, My album, Temporal, it it was actually a different process than the last two albums. Because with Temporal, what I did is I had probably 30, 30 different beats that I love like i really like the beats and like i also looked at analytics and to see what other people were like like people that when i posted these beats that they liked it or not so i knew that i had something right but for me i always like making instrumental experiences i'm not one to just put out a beat tape you know what i mean i wanted it to be uh front to back a whole smooth transition the whole way through the album to take you through like kind of a a mind journey kind of thing so the hardest part for me when i i had these beats made was to find things that matched up and flowed together so after i had the 30 tracks i think i narrowed it down to 10 and then it was down to eight and then eventually down to the six that i have now because it's like i had songs in between other songs but they just seemed the the steer the flow of the of the experience i was trying to give into a different direction so like when i'm making stuff there's really no rhyme or reason when i'm making it you know what i mean if you ever watch like i do live streams a lot on youtube i'll sample a bunch of stuff in when i was doing those live streams just random things i thought sounded cool at the time i would just sample them all in there just so i had substance to work with and then i would kind of play around with them you know what i mean i'm always i like tweaking things and just trying weird things out. You know what I mean? I don't like the, I don't look at the beginning of me making a beat and I can never see the end. Like, I don't know what the end is going to look like. I just let it go and I try to let things flow naturally as possible. And I like to just 
push buttons and you know what I mean? Maybe I'll push a wrong button, but it will sound right. And then yeah. all of a sudden my mind triggers. And then I'm like, okay, let me go with that sound. Let me move this along. Let me try this along. So as far as making the beat, like it could literally go anywhere. But as far as putting like the instrumental album of Temporal together, like there's really a, I, I have a real strategic process in doing it. Like I, I want it, I want it to sound almost like one instrumental the whole way through with little change ups when really I have it split into six different tracks. But I, I always envision it as just one long instrumental. Is that, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it sounds like, so you go through the process, you sample some things or what have you, however you come up with your, your beats. It sounds like, okay, you got your different beats. You got a bunch of them that you made over time, but then you go through them and you listen to them. You're like, right. you try to put this one with that one. See which I don't ones think go I've together. ever finished a beat in a day. Like, I don't think I've okay. ever like started a beat. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, that beat's finished. Like, I, that's, I, it just doesn't work for me. Like, I always have to come back the next day or the next okay. week with fresh ears and a new perspective. Okay. So when you started making the songs on the, uh, for this instrumental album, it is all instrumental, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So whenever you started making these songs, did you have an idea in mind? Okay. I want to make a, a full album or, you know, I'm going to put 15 songs together. How many songs is it? It's six tracks. Six, six tracks. tracks. So yeah, it's around 11 minutes long. So did you have the idea in your head? Okay. I just want to keep making a bunch of songs and see which ones go together. Or you just made beats separately on their own and you just That's threw them yeah. together. Yeah. There was, there was always the idea that I, I want to release another instrumental album, but as I'm making things, I'm never really specifically trying to make something for that album. I just, I'm really about, uh, a natural flow to things. I never try to like force things to work. Okay. You know, I, mean? yeah, I yeah. just try to let things flow. So like, uh, the six instrumentals that I have on this album, uh, like two of them I might've made in March, uh, three of them I might've made last year. You know right. what I mean? It's kind of all, you know, okay. this is what works together, like without me even knowing I'm doing it. Right. You know, creating these different tracks at different times of the year to bring them all together at one point. Right, right. And that's, I, that's one of the advantages of making so many beats is you got a, a, a bit to, co you know, choose from. Okay. Which <laughs> that one I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I definitely have a catalog of beats to choose from, man. But like some of them are hit and miss, you know what I mean? They're, but I go through and I try to listen to them all because there might be just that little tiny thing though that I missed when I was making it that I'll hear now that'll set me off onto a whole nother beat. You know what I mean? Because there's been times even me live streaming well, I'll make a beat for the first 20 minutes of the live stream. And then by the end of the live stream, that beat that I made in the first 20 minutes doesn't oh, yeah. exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely have seen a few of your live streams that were yeah, like that. Appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but at the end of the lot, <laughs> it happens a lot, man. Unless I always try but, to just keep things going. You know what I mean? I never yeah, like yeah, if, yeah. I, if I write a bass line and then say like one note didn't drag out long enough, I'm not sitting there just keep focusing on that note to try just to just keep the process things. going. Right. Moving along, you know what I mean? Yeah, things seem, I mean, it's worked out for me so far, <laughs> right? You know, but That's yeah, cool. sometimes cool. it can go astray. And you know, I like the idea of like putting the songs together because, um, and the reason why I just want to give it a brief example, real fast. Like, I remember the first time I listened to the Wish You Were Here EP or album, whatever you want to call it, by Pink Floyd. And if right. you put that on, I don't know if you, I'm sure Absolutely. you've heard that. So. I, know, I know them all, them albums. <laughs> all right. So when you put oh. that on and you, it's, it's an experience. You got, when you hit play on that, you just got to let it go. You got to listen to the whole thing. Absolutely, man. And it's like, it's almost like if you hear the song on the radio, you're like, this isn't even the song. Like, right. this is only a piece right. of the song, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. And even like on some of the ends of this, like, doo -doo 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 -doo, start running. And yes. Wait for the next part of that, so the next part to come in. Exactly. Okay. The radio stops and plays Britney Spears. And something. then there's even like a part one and then a part two at, happens later on. And it's just, it all connects. Radio only plays part one. Or yeah. Part and you're like, yeah, yeah. right. Yep. <laughs> I do that with another brick in the wall. I know a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm definitely inspired a lot by Pink Floyd and how they make their albums flow like that, man. Like, I think that's beautiful. Like, that's really, it's funny you said that because I've never actually even thought that I'm doing that. But I guess I kind of am doing that. Like I'm kind of taking the Pink Floyd model and trying to put it into like a hip hop instrumental album. 
Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I've never actually thought of it that way, man. That's cool. You gave me that new perspective on that. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's real cool. I love Pink Floyd, man. <laughs> so again, if you're just tuning in, in your brain, we're speaking with my dead friends. He's got a few instrumental out. You can check him out on Spotify, Apple Music, all the popular platforms. Everywhere. Everywhere. And I'll try to hook you up with like um, a link in the description of this video or audio, however you're watching or hearing this. And um, definitely check him out. He's got some nice uh, instrumentals. And, um, you Appreciate know. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Support. You got it. We got to support each other. You know what I'm saying? So That's the best way to do it, man. We've, uh, I think you've... Uh created a real nice community of producers man like there's a lot of people that i've got introduced to because of you so i appreciate what you do over there too at uh matthew creating music man it's it's really cool right on yeah heck yeah heck yeah man i appreciate you so um before we sign off here yeah man what is like your number one power tip that you can give you know in people are just getting into producing music like what is one tip that you can get them to kind of just accelerate the process one thing man that sticks out when i have because i actually i i did a recent interview with somebody and they asked me the same question and the thing that i stuck with me is don't listen to the people around you <laughs> like the, your friends if they're not making music they don't understand you like they don't know what you're going through as an artist and a musician trying to create things like that. So they'll hear something, two seconds of it, and they'll be like, oh, this sucks. This is that. But they don't know the effort and like the struggle and the passion you put into things. You know what I mean? So really what I could say to someone that's just wanting to start out, they want to make music is, this is your moment, man, to really be you. Like You don't have to prove anything to anybody. There's... Nobody that can tell you otherwise that what you're making is trash because it is what you wanted to make. It was the feeling that you had is what you wanted to express. So you can't lose when you're making music. Like To me, yeah, there's music that I don't listen to that I might not like. But to me, there's never really... like I would never put anyone down for their music and be like, uh, you need to stop making music or something like that. This is terrible. You're not a good musician. That's like the most awful thing you could say to somebody that's trying to express themselves. So to me, if you're trying to start out and you want to be a musician. There's going to be people that are, are going to want, they're going to hold you down, like without even knowing that they're doing it. Maybe, you know what I mean? And I think you really just have to look into yourself and know that you're doing it for you. And if you get the joy out of it, if you get happiness from it, man, please continue to do it, man, because that's something that nobody can take away from you. And that's something that music has always given to me. And I can't leave music, man, because I love it too much. <laughs> yes, sir. 100%. Yeah, that is great. Yeah. That's awesome advice. That's kind of where I stand on that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm glad that you shared that. And then sure. that's why I always say on my channel, you know, continue creating music. That's why I'm wearing absolutely. the shirt that says continue creating music. That's why it's the name of this podcast is continue creating. Don't like... Just do it. Like even right. you, you can even tell it to yourself. Like, oh, I'm bad at this. You can have you can like get in negative, your own head, man. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just you gotta ignore that person in your head. All right, or that dialogue in your head, and just keep doing it. <laughs> it really is. It really does come down to it. I know it could sound silly and stuff like that, man. But we all live with that, man. We all live with this voice in our head sometimes that you know tells us, oh, maybe you can't do that. But I'm telling you, man, when it comes to music. Just keep playing with it. Keep having fun with it. You cannot go wrong. The music will always be there for you. That's what right, I love right about on. it, man. Awesome, awesome. Again, if you want, uh, where where can people find you at? What's the best way for anybody hearing this to find you? Uh, at my house. I pretty much stay here most of the time. <laughs> well, if you want to find me on the internet, you can find me at My Dead Friends, ending in a Z on all social media platforms, man. My dead friends. That's I have so, that same name across everywhere, man. So plain yeah, and simple. You can absolutely find me anywhere on the internet. Just Google my dead friends. With a Z. With Not a Z. an S. My face pops up. <laughs> Your face pops up too, actually. <laughs> right on, right on. Yeah. Two song sound challenge, man. Two song sound challenge. Yeah, that's that's that actually a couple years ago, man. We did that. A couple years ago. That's the first one that we we did together. The two, yep, yep. two sound challenge. Yep, yep. And then we actually did one again. Well, maybe a year ago now. Yeah, it's probably probably it's been a while. It's been a while it's since a we while. actually collab. I think actually, 
Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you can also find them on my channel too if you type my dead friends. So, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, I'm all social media. You can find me at my dead friends and uh, the new album, Temporal. Temporal. So all right. Out. I've That's the newest project. one. So when they when they find you on Spotify or iTunes, Temporal. Right. Temporal. Temporal Excellent. is the newest album. Yeah, man. I'm real excited about it, man. It's 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 been something I wanted to put out a while ago. It's something I worked on for like the past few months. Cause it's been August 2019 was when I released Grey Matter, which was my second instrumental album. I released that almost, August 20, it was almost a year ago. <laughs> I mean, eleven months. And like I'm kind of Shocked to myself that I wasn't releasing things more steadily, you know what I mean? But I really, this new album, man, it's, I am extremely proud of it, man. Like, it, it really flows front to back. It's, it's magical to me, man. Like, at the end, I think everyone's going to be really pleased okay, with okay, how okay, it sounds okay. and how it come out, man. Yeah, I got to hear a sneak preview of one of the songs. It's definitely... It did. <laughs> sounded it was sounding nice in my living room speaker so yes sir solid cool, man work i on appreciate it. that like, yes 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 yeah, all I'm right so i think we're going to wrap this up here i do appreciate you again for being you know hey, i just want to say matthew i here. appreciate you having me man you don't realize how much this means to me as a smaller channel you bringing me onto your channel like this and giving me a platform to speak uh promoting my music like i greatly greatly appreciate the things you do for the community and you do for me, man. I talk to you a lot online. You're a good guy, man. And I just really appreciate you having me on here. Awesome, man. Yeah, it's good to hear, man. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. You know, thanks for being on. You know, thank you. It's like, I, I think we all need to work together, you know, as a community. And, you know, that's, I agree. I'm, I'm going to do what I can. Now we're all busy, right? We all have our things going on, but we can all help each other out here and sure, there when man. we can. Maybe like you can help. All of us, like, let's go and, on, you know, go to Spotify. If you're you're listening right now in this recording, you know, go to Spotify, look up My Dear Friends. That's help. If you start stream a few songs, that's help, you know. I appreciate it, man. All those likes and retweets and the oh, yeah, hard. Yeah. At all, man. Feels good, man. Yeah, every little bit helps. Exactly, yo. So, um, so yeah. And again, if you're new to this podcast, if you're new to this channel, subscribe to this channel as well you know matthew stratton and uh this show is going to be called the continue creating show because i just want people to keep going you know just don't give up just keep going why yes, not <laughs> no why not all right so uh anything else you want to say before we sign off here thank you make sure you go out <laughs> and check out temporal i have a couple other instrumental albums out the dirge gray matter but make sure tomorrow today when this reached july 9th 2020 temporal my dead friends all right. And with that note, thanks for listening. Continue creating music. Hey, we'll talk soon, y'all. Peace out.